If you're thinking of building an electric guitar, you're going to want to follow along. We're going to build a Telecaster style guitar from start to finish in the simplest way with some of the simplest tools. The Telecaster is probably the most straightforward guitar you can build until this day it's also one of the preferred guitars for studio recordings as well as an all-around instrument. To make it a bit more interesting I chose Jimmy Page's Dragon Tele as my inspiration. I'll take you step by step from planning to stringing and I'll show you all the tools and techniques so you can use them yourself and eventually build your own. So stay with me, let's build a guitar! I'm Yoav and this is the Electric Luthier. Today we're going to start this tele project which I will build from scratch, meaning no kits and no refretted necks. This is not going to be a short tutorial so it will probably be spread over a number of videos. Many guitar builders would recommend a tele style guitar as a starter project for the simplicity. The two pickups with a three-way switch, the bolt-on neck, and the solid body were designed to simplify production and costs. As well as going through the whole process, I'll be linking additional tutorials and building aids in the description below and in the video. Those will include my checklist for your build so you don't miss anything, scale charts and the tools I'm going to be using. It will also include some jigs I've made build along the way. So I want to quickly run over the checklist and make sure we know what we need and where this is going. For a more in-depth look at the checklist, check out my All You Need To Know To Build Your First Electric Guitar video linked here, I think, and the list itself in the description. We're talking about a Telecaster style solid body with a bolt-on neck and a matching Tele headstock shape. I'll get into the materials later. My specs are scale length, like the standard fender of 25.5 inches or 648 millimeters, and I'll be installing 22 jumbo nickel silver frets. I know vintage tellies have 21 low profile frets, but I'm not going for a replica, and you can choose whatever you prefer. The inlays and side dots will be white dots, and there's not going to be any binding, of course. The hardware will include two single coil pickups, one black and one chrome lipstick style with a three-way switch, one volume and one tone pot. The neck will have a C profile, 42.6 millimeters wide at the nut and a fretboard radius of 9.5 inches like modern fenders. I'll use the classic chrome telebridge with three saddles and string it through the body. The nut will be synthetic bone and the tuners vintage chrome. It's highly advisable to order all your parts before you get started. Sizes and shapes are not consistent over time even if you order original parts from Fender. They vary from model and from year. Now before I jump into the work itself, and if you like where this is going, hit the subscribe button and also the bell button if you want to get notified where more of these videos come out. You're also welcome to visit my website, theelectricluthier.com, with tons of more information for the aspiring guitar builder. There's a certain order in which I work which has a sense behind it. It works well for the set of tools and methods I use. I will explain and refer to it along the way. And this is by no means the only way to build an electric guitar, but I'm still experimenting and perfecting it myself. But it works. I'll try and keep the flow of the build going, and I'll speed up any parts I think are either repetitive or literally watching paint dry. 
If you see me skipping on what looks like mistakes or errors, A, call me out on it in the comments below. I'll answer. And B, know that I did not edit them out to make myself look perfect. I'll do a video of all the mistakes and how I corrected some of them at the end. I do believe you learn from mistakes, so you might just as well learn from mine. Some parts and materials are also being delayed because overseas shipments are being delayed lately. And some compromises or temporary solutions may need to be made. If this is your first or second build, and you're going for a specific model like I am, using a template is definitely your best bet. I'll link the template I'm using below in the description, but you can get free or pay templates of other guitars. Just do a quick search. I go deeper into templates and how to make them in my Make Your Own Electric Guitar template, which I will link here and below. For creating your template, you want to first print in full scale. If you don't have access to a large enough printer or a plotter, you can tile print it as a PDF. Make sure you separate the body from the neck as they do overlap in some plans. After you've printed it and cut it, you can either just paste it directly or trace it to the MDF or good quality plywood. Then cut along the lines. I'll be using my faithful jigsaw for most of the rough cutting but a bandsaw will do the job just as well, if not better. For getting a perfectly straight line on the neck template, I like to route the length with a template copier bit using a straight edge. That will give me the best result, which will be transferred to the actual neck. I will then sand it to get a smooth edge using my improvised spindle sander, a disc sander, manual files, sanding blocks, and sanding paper. The rule of thumb here is to keep the edge a straight 90 degrees so if you're sanding manually always use a block or wrap a sanding paper around something like a piece of uh, broomstick or even a drill bit. They're great because they come in many sizes and diameters. If you use your hand you'll probably round the edge and that doesn't work as well. For the body template, it's pretty much the same process. I don't pay too much attention to the neck pocket. I like to tailor it to the neck after it's done. It should give a tighter fit. Some of the corners may be too tight for a router bit and will give you better results using a drill bit. Some templates, like the Stratocaster for instance, will actually show you which diameter drill bit to use. The templates will really determine the shape and smoothness of the body. So it's worth your time sanding them as much as you can. It saves you time sanding the actual wood afterwards. I'll start with the neck. I'm going for a laminated neck. If you don't have a good quarter sawn piece of lumber, a laminated neck may be your best choice for a stable and warp-free neck. I also like the way it looks. If you plan on using a one-piece neck, you can skip the lamination part. It's all the same after that. I also go into much more detail on the lamination process in a separate video, and I'll link that below as well as up here. To get the laminated neck, I cut four book match strips of maple and three strips of mahogany veneer to go between them, just for the look. I sand them or plane them to get straight angles and smooth edges. That's for better connection. At the headstock side, I add another strip so I have enough width for the headstock shape. Glue them all together, clamp it, and leave it overnight. Now the minimal neck blank dimensions for a Telecaster are a thickness of just 1 inch or 26 millimeters and you can get away with 2.5 inches or 65 millimeters width 
if you later add the little strip to complete the headstock shape. If you want it as one piece that includes the headstock width, you will need at least 3 inches or 85 millimeters. A length of 27 inches or 680 millimeters should be more than enough even for 22 frets. You should leave a bit more for comfort, but if your timber is just that, it will suffice. Now that's what I call efficient by design. After gluing and sanding it, you essentially have a neck blank. And once I have the neck blank, I'll route the slot for the truss rod. Check your truss rod dimensions first. I'm going to install a 440 mm two-way adjustable truss rod. It has a relatively low profile, so minimal routing is required. You can also install it straight under the fingerboard, so the traditional skunk stripe or bending it is not really necessary. We are aiming for simplicity, right? The slot is quarter an inch or six millimeters and should run along the center line of the neck. You can use a guide that comes with most routers or a jig like the one I made which keeps my trimmer router centered. The adjustment nut will be at the headstock side, Stratocaster style. Personally, I can't see a reason other than sentimental to have the adjustment done at the heel side where you need to either loosen or remove the neck altogether for every adjustment. You can just as easily do it on the headstock side. A word on routers and trimmers. Whenever I can, I prefer using a small trimmer router for the simple reason that it's easier to handle, has less kick, and is more forgiving. It does often require working in smaller increments, but that's a price I'm happy to pay. I even made an extended plate and handle for it for better stability. I'll demonstrate working with a proper router just as well and also the table conversion I have just to show you the different options. So now I'll route the depth in stages. It's easier on the router as well. If you have a strong plunge router, one go may be enough. The adjustment nut will require deeper and wider routing than the rest of the slot. So like the depth of the specific truss rod you have, make sure you match it. I'll route this part freehand. It's going to be hidden anyway. When the slot is ready, it's time for taking the next shape a step further. By the way, please hit the subscribe button and the bell beside it to get notified when my next video comes out. And do come check my website, theelectricluthier.com, where you'll find more related articles and much more. I do like to keep the back of the neck flat as long as possible. It makes work more comfortable. Going back to the neck template, I will mark the shape and the width of the neck and cut it with a jigsaw to leave as little material as possible for the router. It will make it easier on the router but more importantly prevent possible tear outs. We now need to attach the neck to the template for routing. I've had a few unpleasant experiences with double sided tapes. They either stick too well and are hard to remove or are not strong enough. Then I came across the masking tape and super glue trick. If you're not familiar, the idea is you attach masking tape to both sides and then super glue the masking tape back to back. It's strong enough for sideways motion when routing, but relatively easy to take apart. Just don't overdo it with the super glue. It will drip and glue things you shouldn't. If you have super glue accelerant spray, the connection is pretty much instant. If you don't, you may want to hold it for a bit, depending on the type and quality of the glue you're using. We can route the neck to its shape with a template copier router bit. 
Notice that one second of hesitation or lack of focus may put a dent in your neck. This is why working on a thin edge with a router is better done on a table router if possible. I'm not too worried about this little gash in particular. I think it'll be gone when I round the back of the neck. Now I'll be thinning the headstock. I will remove almost half of the thickness and leave about half an inch or 14 millimeters. Now there are many ways to go about this. I should make a jig for it and just route it, but I can grind it or sand it with a low grit sandpaper, that'll take a while. I can plane it or scrape it or make cross cuts with a handsaw, just be careful not to go too deep, and then remove the material with a sharp chisel. Whichever tools you possess or prefer will get the job done. I'll leave the rounding part close to the nut until after I've glued the fretboard. Speaking of which, it's now time to prepare and slot the fretboard. Slotting the fretboard is one of those places where you do not want to compromise accuracy. If a fret is off, it will sound off every single time you play it. There are several methods of determining the position and cutting the slots. There are metal templates and wonderfully expensive slotting jigs and sophisticated saws which are probably all not within the budget for the amateur guitar builder. I'll be slotting the fretboard using just a designated fretting saw with the jig and a template I've built for which I only had to purchase a pre-slotted fingerboard. The simple jig is built from scrap MDF and is essentially a tight miter box that enables copying any slotted fretboard or template to another, determining the position with a strip of metal that fits in the slots. The first copy I made became my template which sits square in the miter box and can now be copied to as many fretboards of the same scale length as I wish. I show exactly how I built it and how it works in a separate video I've linked in the description and up here. All I need to do is tape the template back to back to my fingerboard. You can mark the saw with a masking tape as a depth guide. You can use a physical stop or just eyeball it. Start with one end, clamp the fingerboard for stability and saw to the desired depth of the fret's tang. Cutting deeper is not necessary, but undercutting will simply leave the fret too high and leave space between the crown of the fret and the fretboard itself. Space for glue is not needed, but I'll get to that later. Now once the saw reaches the desired depth, we release the clamp, lift the template off the metal strip, at the bottom and slide it to the next slot. From here on, it's just slot and repeat for all 22 frets. The template has its own slots or notches for 24 frets and matches a specific scale length. You will need a separate one for each scale length you want to use. There are many more modifications and improvements this jig can and probably will go through, but as far as simplicity, it's right up there right now. If you choose to mark the position of the frets manually, do make sure you always measure from the nut every single time and not from the last fret you measured. This way, any errors will only affect the one fret and will not be compound to affect the following frets as well. I've linked to a downloadable scale length chart for your convenience. When it comes to the saw, don't use just any saw. A designated slotting saw has the right thickness for the fret tangs. Most saw blades will be too thick and you may end up with a loosely fitting fret. 
These saws are not expensive and are well worth it. For the fretboard, I'm using Indian rosewood, which I ordered online. It came a bit thicker than the average, and I didn't take the time to thin it down too much. But I'll work it out with the overall neck thickness later. After all the frets are slotted, you can also cut the tips off and an extra slot for the nut itself. I'll be using the jig and the template again to help keep the fretboard square and centered. Make sure you match the nut's width to the slot you're making. I'll chisel out the material between the zero fret and the one above it for the nut later. For the lower end, I'm just cutting all the way through where the 23rd fret slot is. I'm trying to squeeze 24 frets into a 21 fret template, so I will need to negotiate the neck, the body and the scratch plate to fit it in, without of course changing the scale length. Join me in the next part, when we'll glue the fretboard to the neck and continue building this Dragon Telecaster. Until then, if you want more information about building electric guitars, articles and free downloadable scale charts or the checklist, make sure you subscribe, check out the links below and come visit us at theelectricluthier.com.